Hello, I'm John Thorne from Silverstone Shooting Centre and in this episode on the Practical Mini Rifle we're talking about shooting man apertures. Welcome back. Right, shooting. Now, during the course of this series what we're going to try and do is break down each part of the process of practical shooting in terms of the moving and firing and different process. And one of the first things that we'll learn after the start positions we've done is the concept of shooting around barriers. Now I've put in a very simple course of fire here, a couple of targets down the bottom, and what we're going to do is the process of manoeuvring around the range from side to side, making sure that our muzzle is pointing in a safe direction, which is obviously down range, and shooting around a barrier. Now it's only a very short movement here, but it's designed to sort of show the process behind it. And one thing we tend to find with new shooters is that they're very used to the concept of being a bit Hollywood and shooting the gun and manoeuvring the gun with it tucked into the shoulder. You see on TV, the guys are SWAT, where it's going to be, they'll move around like this. They're constantly doing this, going around, shooting around, okay? Now, the reason why that's used in military and police is because they're shooting at things that are going to shoot back at them, okay? Don't care how dangerous these paper targets are, none of them are armed, none are going to shoot me. So what we're looking for is speed. Now, if you think about it, once you have your up on your shoulder and you're moving around, by definition, your movement is restricted, and so is your vision. If you're looking down the scope, it's a different process. For practical mini rifle or practical shooting, it's how fast you can maneuver it. And you can time it, you can do this yourself, you can. Get yourself a, I don't know, a guitar or a banjo or even a stick and see how fast it takes you to maneuver front and back with it in your shoulder. And then change it and take the gun away from you. And I always say in the training we do, it's a gun, but it's only a gun when you're aiming it. Other than that, it's a big stick. Now, if you have it away from your body, your capacity to move is much faster because my arms act as suspension for the gun rather than it being tucked to my shoulder. So the first thing we teach people is take away this fat in the shoulder, stick the gun out here, okay, away from the body. It also means if I'm maneuvering around a range, I've got to make sure the muzzleless gun is pointed down range. I swing it beyond 90 degrees and get disqualified. Same thing applies, gun to my shoulder, if I want to run that direction, my shoulders are pointing that direction. So by definition, my gun will swing in that direction. If I want to run that way in my shoulder, I'm going to struggle. If I have it away from my body, I can very quickly run that way and still keep that muzzle pointed down range. Okay, so up close, you're restricting yourself. Further away gives you a chance to move around and you can concentrate on the barrel being a safe direction. The other thing about it is that the speed of going round a barrier is also based on moving the gun. You move the gun around the barrier rather than your whole body around the barrier. It's faster. Same thing applies. If I want to start over here and I've got the gun in my shoulder and I'm shooting around the barrier, I've got to come around here, then shoot again. If I have the gun away from me, I can shoot, bring it back against itself, up again. I'm faster in terms of movement and I'm faster in terms of the gun. Okay? What we're going to do is try it now. So I'm going to load up now. Safety's on, and I'm going to try it both ways. Okay, so that's 4.12. Okay, so let's try it again. Two point three eight, <laughs> much faster. Again, <clears throat> let's try it once more. And again, you saw it catch in my jacket. Then same thing I applied earlier on in the, earlier in the series of trying to shoot in the clothing you'll actually compete in. It's not a big jacket; it still caught me there. But that manoeuvring allows me to move around the barriers. Now. The other thing to consider is that I've got a barrier here. Let's assume we've got a longer distance target. It's always better if you can, is to steady yourself on the barrier itself. Now, this isn't very solid, okay? Not gonna be able to lean it too much, but I can still get a hand on it and give me a better position. 
Now I'm left-handed, so I'm shooting right hand this time. What you want to do is with your hand is grip the barrier in any way you can and then give yourself a bridge for the gun to sit on. Anyone's played snooker or pool, that's what you're looking to do. If you hold the gun and try to hold it against the barrier, it's going to cause swing around the place. So I can get a much more solid position if I go on, hold the barrier, it's much easier. And the same thing applies. If I'm maneuvering the gun with the weight of my body, I can very quickly get on and put around on target than I can do by holding it close to my body. Having it away from my body is a process, it gives you that room for manoeuvre. All right, so we'll try it again. So again, it's not it's a typical barrier, not very solid, but it gives me just enough to maybe stabilize the barrel a bit more to give me a better shot on target. Okay, simple barrier type process behind it. And the same thing applies underneath. Okay, so we've got a low aperture here as well. And the two is that you either sit down or kneeling, same process behind. And what I found with people who kneel and shoot is they kneel the wrong way, okay? The idea about kneeling is that you actually have your supporting hand with a knee up. So, this is my supporting knee. Here's my shooting hand. My elbow is on that knee. That's what gives me a stable position. It's very common to see people come through and they'll do that. <laughs> Not very helpful. So what we try to think is that you're, if you're a left-handed shooter, your left knee needs to be up. If you're a right-handed shooter, right knee. So if I go that way, it's much more comfortable and I go more accurate. If I go the other way, which actually feels odd to me, to be fair, I'm wobbling around already. So it comes to knees. Now, <laughs> I've seen people do this. They come up to the barrier and they're ready with that knee forward. Well, um, hang on, I need to change around. You are better off taking that step to going down that knee to lean it than you are trying to go the other round because that gun is waving around. All right? So that's thing that you could practice. Again, at home, unloaded gun, or on a range if you can, is taking that chance to go and practice going onto one knee, up again, and also around barriers. All right, and again, the barrier side of it. I'm a left-handed shooter. I spend half my life complaining about where the course of fire is going. And you can lean back. Now, one of my fellow competitors is much more of a gymnast than I am. <laughs> I can't really get that far back. But it may be easier to actually lean back that it is too to try and swap hands which will cover second on. Okay, so that's something to consider. Also, notice in all these shooting we do, I'm shooting two rounds each time. Okay, there is no point practicing unless you're practicing for competition. So every time we compete, we're putting two rounds into a target. Granted, yes, steel targets have one shot to fall, but most of the stuff is paper targets, therefore two rounds count. Therefore, you might as well train the way you're going to shoot. All right, try practicing that if you can. Home unloaded gun, a range if you can, but this sort of thing you do over and over again. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. All right, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Cheers.